Hi everybody, it's Rose Wander, and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you about rose hips. Um, and so how this came about was I was putting my herbs, and I had picked some rose hips, and um, because they're coming out for, you know, around this time of year, um, when it gets more into the fall, there'll be a lot more on the bushes. But I really like the tea, and for a long time I didn't know you could make tea out of these, and I think it tastes really neat. Um, and there's so many grow in a bush, at least where I am, so you can really use them a lot. Anyway, so I just got into thinking about that, and I was like, well, why don't I share the recipe with you guys so you could try it out too. Um, and then I thought, well, there are probably magical properties of them too, so I could look those up and share them with you guys, and that would be helpful. And um, I also want to show you this really cool rock that I found yesterday. I was outside trying to find a rock to hold something else down, like so the wind wouldn't blow it away. And I found this rock like near the pile of rocks we have. And um, it's like really flat. I guess it's something, I guess a part of it broke off or something. I don't know, but you can use that perfectly to grind herbs on and I still use my mortar and pestle a lot and I will because this as you can see doesn't sit up straight like this because it rolls over but I still think it's helpful if you need like um, that earth energy you know and it's something from the backyard you know from the local place where I live so I just was really happy like I mean usually even if you have stone ones you have to buy them because they're never flat, like flat, you can hardly ever find flat stones like this. So I was just excited when I saw that. I hope you guys think that's as cool as I do. So let's get started talking about um, rose hips. Now I got some information from the internet that I'm going to share with you guys. And um, I did look for them in some of my wishy books, but I don't really have a lot of herbal books. Um, and the ones I looked up, they weren't in there. So I figured I'd turn to the internet, um, but I figured I'd tell you guys because I know some people don't really trust stuff on the internet, and I understand that, especially for, like, um, factual information. If you're doing reports or something, you shouldn't, I don't think you should use, you know, all the internet stuff without doing background checks on it. But for magical stuff, I'm actually okay with using internet stuff, um, because I really feel like my practice is guided by what I feel and think, and, um... You know, I can, as I, I think I've said this many times, that I can find information, um, but it's not necessarily true that I will use that information. If it feels right, I will. So that's why I'm okay to be guided with the internet, because I don't feel it's a factual thing for me. It's more of an intu intuitive thing. Um, but I know some people are not like that, so I wanted to let you guys know that where I got that information, I'm going to try to cite the website. There's one that I don't know cannot figure out how I printed it without putting the website on there, but I did. Um, so, it's it's usually just like if you Google rose hips, it, it'll be there, but I don't know why it's not on there. So I'm going to try to share as many as I can. So the first thing I'm going to um, share with you is from this article that's from Backwoods Home Magazine. And yes, I do print out stuff because I put them in my book of shadows and stuff so I can use later. So that's why. Um... And here it helps to give a good picture of what these roses look like. I would show you in the backyard, but as I said, it's gotten to that stage where the rose hips have appeared, so the petals have fallen off, so you can't really tell what type of flowers they are. So this is the picture, and um, ours are a bit darker than that, but it's the same type of flower. Um, I guess, you know, flowers are obviously in varying shades, so that's why. And then um, the rose itself is called Rosa Rugosa. I tried to um, print or yeah, print it out so you guys did see it rather than reading the really small print on here. A Rugosa rose. Um, that's how you spell it if you wanted to look it up for yourself. You can find them wildly, and you can also find um, you can plant them. You know, if you find the seeds or whatever, you can plant. Them. Okay, so that's that. Um, then Ehow had some. Okay, now we're gonna sh I'm gonna share with you guys like the magical properties. And this thing from Ehow, um, it's how to use rose hips in Wicca practice. And obviously, we're not all Wicca, but 
Um, you know, it, it's still helpful to get that information. You know, it's still the magical information. So I'd share that with you guys. And one of it is for a spell to draw love into your life. Obviously, it is um, associated with roses. So it'll have a lot to do with love. And then another thing is you can place the rose hips around the home to bring back harmony and peace. So, yes, again, love and harmony. Sort of like rose quartz is with all that feel-good stuff. <laughs> and then um, you can... They're supposed to be really good in healing, with healing work. And it says you can specifically use it for um, sore throat or an upset stomach in a tea. And I was going to, I'm going to do medicinal properties in a second, but that's what I found when I was looking through the med medicinal properties, is that it was good for um, upset stomachs, along with the other few things I'm going to tell you. And then this other website, what is this from? Oh, this is the one I can't find, but if you look up magical properties of rose hips, I'm sure you will come across it, and, um... It states that these, that the rose hips are um, a feminine herb, and that the planet is Venus, that the element is water, which would make sense because it is a lot of love and emotion and that stuff. And then it lists various deities, um, as again, they're associated with love and um, sexuality and stuff. Uh, and they didn't add Aphrodite on here, and since I'm you know, working with Aphrodite, or, you know, looking into her, I sort of feel like it ties into her as well, so that's probably something I would add. Um, and the properties, they list, again, love and healing, but then they also list, like, protection and psychic powers, so um, if you felt that was true, again, you, you, whatever you feel, you could use that for those things. Um, yep. Oh, and they can be used. I'm looking at these rose hips, and I'm like, they don't look that great. But some of them are already dried, which is fine, because I would dry them anyway. Um, you don't have to, though. Sometimes when I make my teas, if I get them fresh, I'll just... This is one that's more fresh, but it's begun to dry out since I already picked it like a day ago. Um, you can use it in your tea just as fresh. And then... Um, some medicinal properties. Well, I guess... It says, in perfumes, it can u be used to treat anxiety and depression, and this is from vegetarianism and vegetarian nutrition, so medicine for the heart and body. That's where this information is from, um, and it also says it's rich in vitamin C, and that it can be used to help treat osteoarthritis because the antioxidants, because they have antioxidant flavoroids, goodness I can't even talk today and they're making me say crazy stuff, <laughs> with known anti-inflammatory properties. Um, so that's sort of why it helps with that. And of course there's a lot more information on these things, that's sort of why I'm letting you guys know. So if you were really interested in this, you could obviously go and check um, these sites out. And again, if you either Google medicinal prop, I can never say medicinal. I wasn't always want to say medicinal. <laughs> medicinal properties of rose hips or magical properties of rose hips. You will get probably these websites as the top websites. Um, some of them are not the exact top ones because again, I try to sort of look for things that look more educational. Um, and this, like this um, medicinal one. I looked up a lot of them and they said the same thing so I just printed out one that sort of said the same stuff because why print out a bunch of stuff when it says the same thing. Um, then finally what I real what the what sort of caused all this was this tea recipe and I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, I will link this below if I remember. Hopefully I'll remember. Somebody tell me if I don't remember because if I get a comment on it I'll go oh yeah and I'll go print it out. But um, this is from Mother Earth Living. Actually, I had a rose hip tea recipe that I've been using for at least two years. I put it in one of my mini binders because um, I love binders and I have them for various things. And for some reason, I cannot find it. But I 
really am sure that this is either the exact one or very close to it. Um, I was really scared that since it's been so long I wouldn't be able to find it, but it looks a lot similar to what I had. So I will just read you um, the directions, and of course you could go to the same website and print it out. Um, I'm not going to be able to read it if I have the camera in front of it, so I'll put you guys over here. It says, combine four round teaspoons cut and sifted rose hips, or four tablespoons whole dried rose hips with four cups of water in a non-reactive saucepan. Cover, bring to a boil, and then simmer for five minutes. So that looks to me that that's basically the dried one. So if you were to get one like this, um, or you were to dry them all and one, you know, one them for winter when they're not fresh, and that's what you would do. Then it said alternatively, so if you have um, fresh ones. Then you would put them in a warm to teapot, um, pour boiling water over them, and steep covered for 10 minutes. And then the last step for either of these things would be to strain the tea and sweeten if desired with a scant <laughs> 1 8 teaspoon stevia, is that how you pronounce that? S T E V I A, um, extract powder or two to four drops of glycerin based stevia liquid extract per cup serve immediately or cool and refrigerate covered for as long as three days so um, this part the stevia part is very important because I remember trying to do this and um, it just has a really tangy flavor and if you don't add that sweetener to it it's not going to taste very good and this is coming from a person who likes to drink all her tea you know, black without any sugar, and that goes for like, you know, red tea, green teas, black teas, you know, and yet I cannot drink this stuff without sweeteners. So, you know, just take that into consideration. And also, you have, um, I mean, there are a lot of rose hip tea recipes online. So, if you were not, if you did not have stevia powder at your house, which I happen to, then you could maybe look up the recipes about that have the honey on it or the sugar. Um, because, yeah, I, I agree you need a sweetener, but it doesn't probably necessarily have to be the stevia. Um, and then it has variations on the, um, below. It says you can, um, add spearmint or peppermint leaves. Um, so obviously, as with any tea, you could add other things and, um, you know, make a different taste if you wanted to. So that's all, and I do remember this recipe being a bit difficult to understand. Um, maybe that's just me, I don't know. But I think what I did um, was use the first part for the dry, like it says one, two, and three. The three is the same for all of them. The one I believe is the one to use for the dried one. And the two, I believe, is the one to use for the fresh rose hips. So, if you are confused, I'm pretty sure I've used that. That's the way I've used it before. And it's worked fine for me. Um, but, again, you can always look up a different recipe. I'm just letting you guys know, you know, what I do and stuff. So, that is all. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you want to see more herbal videos. I mean, I'm not like an expert or anything, but I do like to share stuff, and I'm sort of learning too, so I think it's helpful, you know, to be able to sort of like look at a short video and get some information, but not have to, you know, search it. I don't know. You know, not have to look it up for 30 minutes, and, you know, and it's cool to hear what other people think about stuff. So I was just wanted to put it in a video form for you guys. Um, to help you out and to share what I'm, you know, my experiences with herbs and some stuff that I do. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, again, I'm going to say that again. And um, please like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you want to for more videos. I do videos like this and I do videos where I talk about paganism and when I talk about my life and I do beauty videos, lots of different things at one channel. And as always, if you want to um, 
see certain types of videos, you can always leave me a comment or contact me on my social media networks below. So, um, have a great day, everybody. Bye.